What's up everybody, TCM here back with another video. And today we're gonna to talk about one of the questions that I get asked the most in my cyber mentoring, which is, hey, do I need to work in help desk as my first job? Do I need to work in help desk in order to get into cybersecurity or in order to get into another IT career field? And I think there's a lot of bad advice about this given on the internet. So we're gonna cover my take on it and hopefully it'll answer the question for a lot of you that are watching and they're looking to get into the field as well. So as always, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, all that fun jazz, hitting the bell. As you can see, whoops, other over here, as you can see, we've got our 100,000 subscriber plaque up. I've got a blank spot for the million. We'll get there someday. Really looking forward to it. And you help drive the channel. So please do consider hitting that subscribe button. It takes one second of your time. So with that out of the way, let's talk about this topic. Now I'm going to pull this up here. I went out and did what I was told to do when I was doing my research back in the day. I was told, hey, go get your A-plus certification, get your Net-plus certification, uh, somewhere in here, get your Security-plus certification, we call it the triad, go get your certifications, get a job in IT, start your way from the bottom and work yourself up, okay? That is what I consider, in my opinion, the get off my lawn mentality. That is the old school mentality. That is the way that things were done previously. However, it is not necessarily the case anymore. In my opinion, I don't think you need to do all that, though I still think that help desk is a very important role and a very important job. So let me break down my pros and cons for you and why I say all these things. Now, I am a traditionalist in the sense that I went through the traditional path. I worked on a help desk. Once I was finished with my help desk, got some fancy certifications, I went on and became a network engineer. Once I was a network engineer, got some more fancy certifications. I went on and became a pen tester. Eventually I opened my own business and here we are. Now that path for me was fantastic. I was working as an accountant. I was making $55,000 a year and I hated my life. If you've been watching the channel, you know this story. I decided, hey, I'm gonna take a pay cut. I'm gonna go work in IT, which is something I loved. And I'm gonna find a job on the help desk. And I did that. I went and took a job for $41,000 a year starting out, busted my ass, got some certifications and worked my way up. Now, that's not something that everybody can do. When I went and worked for Help Desk, it was one of the best experiences of my life. Now, I worked for what's called a managed service provider or an MSP. And what that is, is really that means that they have a bunch of clients that they cater to. They are externally facing when it comes to their Help Desk. And MSPs get a lot of bad rep. And that's fine. I think that MSPs are just okay, but the experience that came with it was fantastic. Because I worked for an MSP, I got to see all different kinds of client types. I went and worked at doctor's offices, at construction offices, at everything that you can imagine. And I saw different infrastructure, different tech. I had different tickets every day. It wasn't just the same boring thing. Now I've got a friend who works at a help desk for an internal company. We'll give an example as a hospital works at a hospital and will say, hey, this hospital has the same tech. They're pretty much on the same software, same operating system, same everything else. It's the same thing at work every day. He's actually just limited to a few certain applications. So his help desk experience is really, really limited because he's internal. So he's eventually going to know everything that he needs to know about fixing those applications, where if you work for an MSP, you get a lot more experience. So that was my experience. I loved it. I went through the traditionalist route, used that to scale up, to, to level up to my next position and did it that way. And that was okay for me, but that's not okay for everybody. And the big thing here is everybody has a different path. Now I'll give you another example. The red team lead that works for TCM security, his name is Joe Halley. Some of you know him as the mayor. He never worked a day in his life in IT before he started as a pen tester. His first job in the IT and cybersecurity world was as a pen tester. Think about that. Now, Joe will be the first to tell you that he really had to work hard. He had to make a lot of sacrifices. He went to school. He worked on his bachelor's degree. In that time, he was also getting certifications. He was also working on networking with other people. He did not get to see his family very often. He did not get to see his wife, his kids. It put some strain on his home life. However, that was his path. That was his choice. And he made it. Now, this path for people is different for everybody. There should be a pros and cons list that you put up 
and you write down for yourself. You should say, hey, what if I'm coming from another field? Do I need that help desk experience? Maybe. What if you're working a field right now where you're making $60,000 a year or 70 or 80 or 90 or whatever it might be? Can you afford to take a pay cut and go to $40,000 a year or $50,000 a year working help desk? For a lot of people, the answer is just no, you can't do it. So for the traditionalists that are out there and saying you have to work help desk first, you need that job in order to do anything else in the field. That's a lie. You can go and do other things. You can work hard and get certifications and get to a different landing point in your career. I'm not saying that you need to go zero to pen tester. You can go zero to SOC analyst. Go out and get your security plus. Learn some security basics and you can go work in a security role. Doesn't mean you have to go work help desk. And that security role is going to pay you more money than the help desk job is going to be. Okay. So again, you have to weigh your certain situation. Now, what I am not saying here, and I'm going to make this crystal clear, is that you can skip foundational skills. Just because you don't work help desk or just because you don't go get your A plus certification doesn't mean you don't need to know how to fix a computer if it's broken. Doesn't mean you don't need to know the different parts of a computer, how to build a computer and how things work. You still need your A plus foundational skills, even if you don't go work help desk or get the certification. You still need to understand networking if you're ever going to get into cybersecurity. You need to understand the OSI model, what different ports there are, uh, how to layer security on top of that. You can't skip foundational skills. You can skip foundational jobs. Now, overall, if you work in help desk, is it going to make your path easier? Yeah, you can work help desk, get some experience under your belt. I think it's incredibly useful. However, everybody's situation is different. So if you're working in a job where you're making more money than you would in help desk and you can't just quit that job and go take a pay cut, don't go work the help desk. If you feel like, hey, I don't need to go work the help desk. I'm better off staying in college or doing whatever it is you're doing and just getting certifications and building up your experience that way until you can land a real job. That's fine, too. Whatever your situation is, is what dictates what it needs to be. But please, please, please do not go out there and just listen to the people on the Internet sitting behind the keyboard that are old and have been in this for 20 to 30 years and say, well, I did this, so you have to do this, too. Not the case. You do not have to do what somebody else did. Run your own race, take your own path, and you'll be fine in this industry. I promise you. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Worry about what you can do and what's best for your situation. Whew. Talking nonstop. I don't even think there's going to be really any cuts in this video. That was long-winded answer to the question I get a lot. So hopefully, hopefully that was informative for you. Hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully you can carve your own path using this advice now. So again, if you like the video, please do consider hitting the like button, subscribing, all that jazz. Again, working our way towards a million subscribers. And I thank each and every one of you for all the comments, for all the love, for all the feedback and criticism and everything else that we get. So until next time, my name is Heath Adams, aka The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.